Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery and today we're unboxing something that I've wanted to try for so freaking long and not necessarily this specific knife, but I've wanted to try literally anything at all by Sharp by Design. If you don't know who that is, that's the brand name for Brian Nadeau and yeah, he is one of those knife makers where his designs are absolutely beloved. His personality is not always beloved, but you know, a lot of people get a kick out of his strong opinions. Um, but his knives are beloved, but they've, they, they're hard to come by. They're, they're pretty expensive. And the big thing is that they're huge. They tend to be huge. And there's always been something about them that hasn't quite been perfect enough for me to try and spend my own money on one of them. But this finally came out. And let's, let's just take a look at it. I'll open it up and stop rambling for now. Um, there's a very good reason why I'm using this new nude Holt haptic that I just picked up to unbox this, and that will certainly come up later. I bought this on DLT Trading, so shout out to them. They're pretty cool knife shop. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is a mini Tempest. And you know what? Screw you, Brian, for calling a three and a half inch knife a mini, but oh well, I get it. I get it. Your full size knife is even bigger. Oh, oh God, that's pretty. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't get on, get, get in on the pre-order on this originally for two big reasons. And one of them is that, that size I just mentioned, this is a three and a half inch knife and that is outside of my usual comfort zone. I'm usually uh, in the three to 3.3 inch space. Uh, and the other reason is because I didn't know it came in this blade shape. We'll look at that in just a second. Let's feel how this opens. What's this D10 like? Crisp. <laughs> okay, I didn't know it came in this blade shape. I swear, when I was looking at these, I only saw the clip point, and I'm just not a clip point person. That's another reason why Brian's designs tend to not super speak to me, is he does a lot of clip points. And I just didn't know that this was coming in one of these, uh, in, in a drop point variant. So when I learned after the fact that these existed, I thought, you know what, I should have given it a shot. Because even though it's bigger than I normally would want it to be, this is reasonably tight. I gotta try this. Oh, <laughs> that's good. I thought, you know what? It's so freaking a me-shaped knife now that I see it in this version. And the other thing that happened is I didn't know that there was this version in blue fat carbon. Well, originally there wasn't any fat carbon. He tried to work through carbon plate. There was a the whole, carbon plate is another company. Um, actually, here, this, this is carbon plate. Yeah, this is on my uh, my brown cortex. Anyway, yeah, he tried to work the carbon plate. There was a whole fiasco where they basically ripped him off. Anyway, he had to fall back to fat carbon, but I didn't know they were going to do, be doing a blue variant, and I end up, oh man, I just think this is such a freaking gorgeous looking knife. So I, 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 when I learned that this all is an option here, I went and tracked the release of the after. That's so good. I released the track of the release on the, um, on the, the, not the secondary, the vendors. Basically, in, in addition to the getting in on the pre-order, you could get them through some of the people, like I said, through DLT trading. There's a couple other folks that had them. And so with the moment these popped up, I, I just had to jump on one. Okay. Honestly, this does not feel like a three and a half inch knife in my hand. So his whole thing is that he, he tends to call his full size knives, which are about four to four and a quarter inches, the standard version. And then he tends to call the minis three and a half or the three and a half is minis. And then sometimes he'll do a three inch and call them micros. The exception there is like the void. He did that in a, in a three and a quarter inch. And then he calls the other ones, the bigger ones, the XLs. I, again, I find it obnoxious as heck that you would call a three and a half inch knife a mini, but there are people that are just much bigger knife people than me. One of the things I really wanted to know is can I? Ooh, it's really quite tight feeling. I can. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. So he said on Instagram that this fuller was not meant to be flickable, like that was not the design, but that it is flickable. I find it definitely flickable. It's not the easiest access, but it's certainly plenty of access. I'm going to have to see how well I can tune this. One of the things that Brian does that it really does bug me a lot is that he uses and insists on using this style of, of a pivot. But you can see on these versions that it's mostly for show, that this is indeed a regular Torx screw. On his customs, he does this. And part of the reason he does this is because he says that people shouldn't take them apart. I, I'm, I'm a everyone should be able to take apart their knives to maintain it type person, so that bugs me. Um, but this is, like I said, mostly for show. So I'm going to have to tune this just a little bit. I might even just do that right now since I am finding that this is definitely a bit tight. That looks like a T8 to me. Oh yeah, that's way better. Ah, uh, yeah, that is way better. I'm still messing that up. Okay. Okay. Now I'm getting somewhere. This is so freaking beautiful. So the big reason why I wanted to check this out, anything from him at all, is because of this. So I'm going to zoom in here. This is the OG detent nub. Or, well, at least it is, you know, it's it's um, Riot's recreation of it. So Brian Nadeau invented the concept of the detent nub. So rather than a detent ball, we have a milled platform that acts as like a little butte-shaped plateau right there. And it has a built-in ramp that abuts the edge of the knife. So one of the things that makes this so special is that you don't need any kind of detent ramp. The moment you get off of this lock bar, you are now on this ramp built into that little space right there. Oh, oh, I love it. And then on the reverse side, instead of having the like um, sloped side of a ball that you're rolling up, you've got a flat or relatively flat ramp side on the edge right there. And the only other person that does this is the Holtz, hence using this knife. But their version of it is shaped very, very different. I happen to have two Holtz because I'm a crazy person. And these are very, very similar, but subtly different. You can see that this one is a little bit longer and a little bit further back. The ramp itself is a little bit longer. On this one, it's uh, a little bit shorter. The entire thing is squeezed in this way. And the entire thing, the ramp itself is much steeper. But both of these are much, much taller and much, much shorter than what we're seeing over here. Brian's version is much shallower and just a lot longer. And so what you get when that, so these types of uh, detent nub things means that you get a like a, a constant force as you push up it. Normally as you move up the side of a detent ball, the force it takes to move up this becomes less and less and less and less because the comparable uh, angle that you're working at becomes shallower and shallower and shallower. So it's just like a, a, like a more and more shallow hill you're trying to push up. But on a detent nub, it's like a constant force. And then when you get to the top, it's like a rounded off detent. I mean, not, not rounded off, a, a, a flattened off detent nub or ball or something like that. We have a crisp, clean corner. And so these knives have this really, I don't know if you can hear, but it has this really crisp break. But because that nub is as short as it is, it means that you don't have to travel very far. And so this is a reasonably light detent. But the shape of this flipper tab is so um, high up compared to this and and sticks out past the top of this, you have so much leverage that you get a really, really great open. And man, yeah, that reverse flick is still so good. And so even though it has like a really pretty light detent, it's a crisp break, which is how you're getting that still snappy action. This blade is gorgeous. This is a, a Riot hand rub satin. I happen to have this on hand right now too. This is a Pena X series from Riot that it's also done in a hand rub satin, that same kind of beautiful edge. And yeah, it's not my favorite finish from like a user finish perspective, but man, is it a pretty finish. I freaking love how beautiful that is. You can see that the, um, 
the plunge grind here is this really long swooping kind, but they do this far enough back that you have plenty of room. It, it, it basically ends up here and you have plenty of room there. And there is a result, if you have smaller fingers, I wear medium sized gloves and my, and my hands aren't very just generally thick. And so this works as a totally sufficient um, finger toil for me. But if you have big hands, this really probably won't work for you. But the reason why it kind of works for, for people in general is because this is nicked, this is cut forward, this isn't coming straight down. And so even on my hands, I can kind of push my, my finger up into that, but it's not jabbing me. It's not doing a little tiny puncture wound. How does this fit in general? Yeah, this really does not feel like a three and a half inch knife. I, 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 I already tweaked this on camera and I don't normally do something like that, but I'm going to go ahead and measure this on camera because I'm just thrown by that. It just does not feel three and a half inches to me. Oh, nope. Spot on. Wow. Spot on three and a half inches. Okay. I'll take him at his word. Wow. This is maybe going to be the knife that convinces me I can have three and a half inch knives. Is that really going to happen? Wow, because this just is so light. This is another thing. This thing is only 3.36 ounces. And so as a result, that, I mean, that that's that's um, not because of internal milling like that. It's because of these, well, I think there is actually skeletonization pockets. I saw like a, like a disassembly. Um, but I think there actually is skeletonization pockets under here, but this carbon, this carbon fiber plate here means that this handle feels so lightweight. The balance is spectacular oh wow that is really really good so for a knife to be balanced you want the balance point to be right where your index finger is and then you want the weight to be evenly distributed in the handle and evenly distributed in the blade so blades that are really asymmetric or handles that have a lot of weight at the back or something like that they just won't feel balanced the same way and this yeah that balance the ergos on this it just melts into my hand i the ah uh, I'm really, really glad I picked this up. I didn't think that a three and a half inch knife would ever feel so natural in my hand. So um, this swedge up here is stylistic, but it's definitely thinning out the blade. So you can see that this grind up here is right about in the midpoint of this fuller is where the height of this grind is. And so this drop here and the swedge here is making this part here thinner than it would be at the thickest point up here behind the blade. And this is like not super thick blade stock, but I think it's 0.14. And so it's on the thicker end of what I'd want an ADC knife. So it's nice to see this entire front half of the blade thinned out because it'll be easier to push through materials up there. But the thing I am finding is that it's coming to a reasonably thin uh, line across the top. And so if you were to put your finger, yeah, like this, it's just not going to be anywhere near as comfortable, but I don't know if I, I don't know. This isn't, because this isn't a, a tip at the bottom style knife, and the, the, uh, that's the type of knife I typically use for utility cuts. I don't know if I would really use this for that type of purpose. And so I don't know if I really would be trying to choke up really, really far like this and put my finger on this thinner edge. The more realistic use case would be this kind of further back spot where I have it in my hand like this, instead of up here like that. And then you're pushing on this full spot. And you can see they extended the jimping this entire way, which means if you have your finger like that, or if you have your thumb here, or if you have your thumb up here, or if you are like me and you can put your finger up there and in this pseudo choil, you get this jimping the entire way. And this jimping is really nicely done. This is one of my favorite kinds of jimping. It's, um, it's, not terribly far in terms of the spacing, but the actual spacing between the jimping itself isn't terribly far. But the bigger, more important thing is that it is shallow and it is crisp. The shallow means you can push on it as hard as you want. And the crispness means that it actually gives traction. Now that I would have liked to have seen them extend another one right there, just one more. They could have kept going, but there's no real purpose, but just one more would mean that you wouldn't have any of this ability to, the ability to slide off the top like that. But like I said, you have such good leverage on this um, from the shape of that that I'm not actually really concerned with the with the like you know ability or the tendency to slide off. Um, 
think about what else I want to talk about with this. So this is a bolster lock, and so I'm assuming... Actually, no, I watched Kevin's video, and so lefty people can handle this just fine because you do have plenty of space right here if you are to be able to put your thumb and not block on that. Um, for me, I find... Uh, bolster locks are still very desirable even as a right-handed person just because um, there's nowhere, uh, especially in like a, a front flipper, what you're doing in a front flipper is you're kind of pinching it weirdly in your hand like this. And if you think about where my fingers are, I'm trying to maintain a good grip as it's like precariously held in my hand, uh, it's right there on the lock bar. And since you want a relatively light detent for front flippers because there it is so precarious in your hand, because you have such small leverage distance, all that kind of fun stuff, it's really, really nice to not have to worry about having your lock, your fingers off on this lock bar at all. You can see that they're doing the lock bar relief as this kind of slotted style. This isn't my favorite on, I mean, okay, let's, if this wasn't a bolster lock that had this, uh, this inlay here, then I would, I would not like what's going on right here because, um, on knives that have this type of slotting as the relief rather than, let me think if I can find literally anything else. Sure. Here, this is the Picaroon Tools Mutineer. This is a more standard lock bar relief where it's just a, a full slot right there. And anyway, types that have this like kind of more slotted version with like the spots, if they're aligned anywhere in proximity to where the clip makes contact, that means that it's very common that your pants will run across this edge as you're trying to slide it in, because this is where the clip is pushing your, your, your pant pocket material down. And so this can act kind of like a cheese grater. But when you have this whole big smooth spot right here, that is completely eliminated. Going further back, yeah, this clip Look at this. Now, I think right off the bat, my number one complaint is going to be the amount of clearance at the front. That is not a whole lot of clearance, but I haven't actually slid it in out of my pocket yet. I just know that on some of my pants that this amount of clearance means that I end up having to fight it, or just not necessarily fight it, but just a little bit more deliberate. But the, the shape of the clip looks quite nice. Um, I, I was wondering from the clip whether or not I'd feel this. I typically don't like it when there's up swept and come into a corner at the exact same time. On uh, knives like that, here, let me grab one real quick. This is a tiny knife. This is the um, cheap budget G10 version of the Best Tech Tulip. Very cute little knife. Actually, spectacular fifth pocket knife, uh, budget knife option if you're in the market. But you can see that the this design of these clips is actually very, very similar. Um, and they, what they're both doing is coming to a sharper point and swooping up at the exact same time. And I hate this clip. It is so sharp right here. This just sucks. And if they hadn't brought it in, if they just maintained the full width, that would have been so much better. Or if they'd done something and they'd you know, kind of cornered it off, that would have been better. And so I was wondering if that would feel that way over here in hand. Nope. No, I do not even feel the clip in hand at all. But I think largely that's because of the fact that this isn't coming up very high. Yeah, I mean, it's it's jabbier than it needs to be if you're just pressing on it. Like if they hadn't brought this in to swoop in like that, then it wouldn't be as pointy right there. But in practice, in my hand, I'm not feeling this. It could be that where it's running, yeah, this is hitting in a very nice spot for me. On my particular hands, it's hitting the end right at this, this little corner, this groove in my hand, and that's partly why I'm not feeling it. Man, this feels so good in my hand. I really wasn't expecting this knife to feel this comparably small. Um, but then back to the clip, retention. Oh, that is tight. Okay, so between it being tight and low clearance, I'm probably not going to love this clip, but I do quite love how deep carry it is. So what do we got going right about there? Yeah, that's about as good as you're going to get for a knife that has to have a screw mounting post at the top. I do think that they could have done internal hardware on this and it would have looked nicer. Um, I think looking at where that would fit. I guess they couldn't with the current design. If you follow this screw path down and look at where it would hit inside, 
it's inside this little joint pseudo backspacery thing right there. So I don't know. Yeah, they probably could have done it. It would just meant that there'd be like a hollowed out um, spot for your bit driver to go in. Speaking of that back part, yeah, look at that. This is one of those things that people call like kind of like a pseudo integral where or an integral backspacer. Um, not a monoblock because, well, honestly, it's a pretty darn similar concept to that too. Basically there is no backspacer because it is built into the knife. The, the two pieces come together and form this just flush union and it, yeah, it's a really cool look. The, the thing overall about this is that it feels so polished and I, I do mean the literal sense of that in a way like i don't mean it's shiny but i do mean that it's smooth everywhere but it's got this very rounded quality everywhere all of these corners have this kind of almost melted feel to them but it also i mean polished in that kind of design language and design ergonomics type sense too then polished in the sense of like this feels really thought out and like this person really knows what they're doing and that's one of the things, another part of the reason why I really wanted to try something from Brian Ado, because the man has been making knives for a long time, and he he really understands um, kind of ergonomics. And so even though though this is such a big knife, everything about this really does feel like this guy knows what he's doing. Um, okay. I don't know. How do I feel about this knife overall? Uh, I'm going to have to take this apart and probably lube it up some because even though it's it's it still feels kind of tight and just feel yes, it just feels tight. But I backed that pivot out to the point where I don't think it actually is tight. I don't know. And so as a result, I'm not loving the action on it just yet. But the actual shape and everything of it, I'm actually, I'm quite loving. This is a very me-shaped knife, and uh, I'm so, so pleased that it actually fits in my hand. Let's look at that real quick. You see where this stop pin is? It's all the way up here at the front, like right, right up at the front. And as a result, you can see there's this like interesting, funky cutout that goes, it goes all the way underneath. So it's right here, and it's going all the way underneath the blades. There's like a like a smile shaped cutout that entire way, but running out the back. Can you see it right there? Yeah, you can see through. That's an interesting design. You don't you do see that sometimes, but you don't see that very often, especially not one quite that long. Man, feeling this detent is just so interesting. It's so soft, but so crisp too that that coming off the top of the plateau of the detent nub and having that crisp break yeah it just feels unlike anything else that is i think my favorite deployment method so far it feels so good it has this really wonderful that the tighter feeling i was describing gives this this kind of thwack feel it feels thick as it's moving it's very smooth. You know, it's one of those things where you don't feel the detent balls at all, but it, it there's just some kind of friction that I'm not quite placing yet in my head. Anyway, I will take this apart and uh, tune it and see if I can get the action a little bit more where I want. But design wise, my God, this is so good. And also I'm very just pleased with the way that this came out. I think I would have liked it if there was even more blue right there, but sometimes blue fat carbon can come across looking like practically black with just tiny bits of blue, so I'm glad that there's a good amount of blue accentuated right there. Yeah, I don't know. This, if I didn't say it enough times, this is OEM'd by Rayot, or Riat, Riot, there we go. And they, they do masterful work, and yeah, this is... This is some of the, the cleanest, best, overall nicest finishing I've seen from Riot. This is absolutely a spectacular, spectacular knife. Cool. Um, yeah, it's not the easiest to, to middle finger flick, is it? 
So I figured since I have it apart to tune it, I might as well show you what it looks like inside. And this is it. There's nothing else going on. And so I realized immediately why they can't make this an internal screw. And that's because there are no other screws. That's it. It's the pivot and that has the entire thing to take apart the knife. Now, on the one hand, that makes it sound like this is incredibly easy to take apart. On the other hand, it actually was really hard for me to get this apart. And that's because Riot has such insane tolerances that you can't just like wiggle it apart. It has to come apart completely parallel. This and this, this post here, are so tightly fit into their corresponding holes that any amount of kind of wiggling to the side, it just doesn't work. And so knives like this, I took out all of the screws and it was still perfectly centered and completely wedged apart. So what I recommend for things like that are tools like this. These are called spudgers. They're made out of nylon. This one's uh, intentionally hard. This one is intentionally flexible. And the whole point of these is these are, are small prying tools. And these are by definition softer than the materials here. So you can wiggle at this all you want. You can bend at it, you can wiggle it in, you kind of wiggle it back and forth, you can pry, and you're not going to bend this because this will always bend before that does. But what these are so good at, especially something like this is really good at getting underneath and kind of applying that upward pressure that you need. And so it was only through like sitting here and going wiggle, 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 bend, 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 wiggle, 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 back and forth for like literally three straight minutes that I finally was able to get these two apart. Oh well. The other thing I do recommend if you're going to be doing that is to disassemble it with the blade like this at this halfway point because then the lock bar will naturally be pushing it up for you and you don't have any extra tension from the lock bar from the you know the blade being in that locked up position that lock up position will put tension on the pivot itself, which will push it against the side of this just ever so slightly. So taking it off and having it in this halfway spot relieves all of the pressure on that side makes it a lot easier to come apart. Anyway, there's nothing else going on in here. These are standard uh, five millimeter bearings that you would find from a Chinese OEM like Riot. And there is, um, there's a little counterboard track for them to ride in. There's a steel washer on that side. And yeah, that's basically what we got. Oh, but of course, the important thing. Focus. There is our detent nub. Yeah, look how incredibly long that is. The other thing I noticed right off the bat that makes this different from the Holtz is look how um, how crooked that is. I don't know what word I want. It shallow, I guess, relatively speaking. This, the side of the detent ramps on the holes is definitely a lot more straight up and down. And that's going to make it uh, a, a steeper slope and thus it's going to require more pressure to push up it. This being more shallow like that is part of the reason why it is easier and softer and requires less force to push that detent hole in the blade, which is right... Uh, where am I looking? Oh, <laughs> well, that in and of itself is a difference. I didn't even notice that. Um, there is no detent hole. That is the detent hole. This edge right here that they have milled in, and notice it doesn't come up to the edge because this is where the stop bar hits. And you, this is going to get you know worn with uh, as you open them, close the blade. The stop bar is going to hit into that over and over again. And so this right up above it is effectively the detent hole. And they've milled that in right there and there's your crisp little edge. Anyway, that edge there is what's gonna push up this side of this ramp right here. Yeah. And this being so long like it is, is like a really nice long detent ramp. It's a lot easier to push up this than the much shallower version you find over here. Let's look at that real quick. Where's my centering? Right there. See how steep and shallow that slope is? The entirety of that ramp is right there. So yeah, it is a ramp and you're pushing up a ramp, but look how shallow that is. Anyway, let's put this back together and tune it up and I'll see if the action improves. Okay, so we are all back together and yeah, absolutely. This is now so much smoother. This, the action is just so much better.
And honestly, I think the reason why I wasn't seeing any result from lightening this is just because of how incredibly tightly these were held together. Like I said, it took me, I, I took the, the pivot out entirely, took the body screw out entirely. And this thing is so incredibly tightly held in place that it didn't move at all. And so I think me backing the screw out didn't really loosen the tension here at all. So by taking the entire thing apart, lubing it, putting some lube on that little um, detent nub, and putting it all back together and using the tension here to be what's tightening it, rather than cranking it down all the way and then backing it out, um, I've been able to get this to the point where there is um, no blade play here. But this is just so, so much smoother. And I gotta say, if it had come like this right out of the uh, the package, I would have just sounded all the more enthusiastic in that unboxing I just filmed seconds ago, because this is suddenly now fantastic feeling and so nice and smooth. Oh, yeah, I love this. This feels... <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, this thing is fantastic. Wow. Okay. Thanks for watching and yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.